All right, uh, demo review, G2 Vitality Challenger Stage, Nuke, best of one. We're gonna examine what the hell happened on this game and how Vitality won, how G2 lost. Now this is not just to make, make it clear to everyone that came here to see the Hooksy hate. It's not about Hooksy, just about examining what the hell happened on the map and trying to understand and see see actually what happened. So. We might as well jump in right into it. So the pistol, uh, we have G2 on the T side, obviously. After the veto, they they chose Nuke and Vitality, I guess, picked the side. So they're starting with uh, P250 for Nico, Smoke Flash. Let's see how that goes. Now, also, also, guys, like I'm doing this old school with Shift F2. I don't have the commands. Never did before. It's just the way I watch it. You know, just whatever. Anyway. Four people outside, Hunter on the silo. I'm assuming it's gonna be yeah, a main smoke and a flash for outside, they're gonna swing. Just default smoke, flash. Now the idea here, guys, is pretty simple. I'm gonna explain this to you. The way I see it is just Nico and Hooks are gonna go down the secret with the bomb. Maybe the bomb gets spotted, maybe not. But the idea is for these three guys to go up the ladder base or up, you know, either either ladder base or top ladder so they can uh, cause some rotations and then go to the ramp and split with um, with the guys from secret. And they go, it's a pretty decent pistol, you know, good as, as any, nothing really bad about it. The thing is like, I think Justin dies here and, um, I don't know why is he looking at main, because nobody's gonna push to that main smoke. He's supposed to be down here, clearing this, and then two people should be leather. Now, what happens here is they just wait a little bit, and I think they're gonna make the same call. Nothing is, will be really, really change when it comes to the call itself. They're gonna go down uh, ramp and secret, I believe. It's taking them a little while now this you can see this this is causing a little quite a little bit of rotations even it's a 5v4 the cities they don't really know what's happening zaibu dies to nico and they take over the take over the lower side but the problem is magisk right nobody expected magis to be here that's the that's the issue right there you know the call was was pretty good i don't think there is anything wrong with this call i would have made the same and any ai jail would probably make the same call now the, the problem is the fact that Magis killed three people with the fucking three bullets, so it's just uh, it's just super super difficult. Now we have the the call was decent. Magis killed he hit three one shot, so it's fine. Now they force. Now this is already something that I don't like. Now we have Hooksy and we have Monesi. Justin has a P two fifty right now. He has a Glock. He bought some nades, two Deagles, and let's see what happens. Ah, oh, yeah, early smokes. And going into an upper hit. Now, this is the problem that I see already, guys. Like the problem is right now, usually when you go outside in any kind of round, gun, half by, full by, whatever it is, force by, if you want to go outside, the idea there is gonna be a flash always, early flash, entry flash, or a molly for secret, or any kind of you know additional utility to push off the outside. This this way they throw two three smokes and spend one molly to get this wall going on, but they accomplished absolutely nothing because you will see right now how uh, Apex moves after this this set of nades they have. Now this is problem number one. Uh, this, this is not a single singular problem they have with this type of rounds. I, I don't think this is a way to call. This is why I criticize Hooksy, but I'm going to explain it a little bit later after this, this sequence right here. So basically, you see that, you know, smoke, smoke, smoke. Nothing really that pushes off Apex from outside. Absolutely not a single thing besides this smoke. So he's going to... Yeah, he's gonna go through credit card, and I think somebody's setting up a flash. Yeah, Zaiwu is setting up a flash for him to clear the close main. All right, he sees nothing, and then he's gonna go and help with the upper hit. Now we see the upper hit going on. He is going to help, and this is pretty much round over right there. So the problem with this type of round for G2, first of all, let me go back. First of all is uh, 
the fact that you go outside with three smokes, you don't really push anything, anybody off. Then you come back and you set up for yourself for an execute where there is one guy. Let's see where Justin is in door. I can see if I can see if I can do this. Yeah, he's setting up a smoke on this little dot that's usual smoke. But as you can see right here, what happens, right? And you have three people going out of the hut, two techs and a deagle. You have the guy on the roof, which is Bonacy, uh right there. And then you have JKS. Now, you already have a problem with the fact that you are going into the site with three people and four flashes. Two people are not going to be entering the site. You have a problem with uh, the fact that there is going to be two guns there. And the third gun from Apex that you can see it in right here. He's coming in to help with the upper hit. And that, that feels like super big disadvantage when it comes to that now and then that's not even you can see let's let's see how this round plays out from the bird's eye perspective or god's eye whatever you want to call it the pre gets two Sp uh, spinks and apex are ready to trade and it's like a pretty super super easy round zaibu even helps from the leather base now the, the the problem is that the biggest problem is not that the biggest problem is not understanding what type of players you have in your team Right, Nico is not the player, and JKS and Hunter, three out of five people, are not the players that are supposed to be running in anywhere, especially not on the guns. Those are the players that have the individual raw skill that you create some space if you are Hooksy, if you are Monacy, or whatever it is, uh, create some space with some grenades and put them in a position where they can have, have like a shot with a one on one with the Eagle, because they're gonna hit that shot more often. Than you would think and that's how you create advantage in these rounds and maybe you get a mid-round call and then you execute this is just a straight up running into a, into your debt and something that i wouldn't approve this is like this would work against the, in, the, in the teams like that are very execution based with uh, not too many high skilled super high skilled players or like you know teams like um big for example you know uh, that are ex you know, heavy execution base, right? They can do these little shreds, and it, it will probably work for them more times than than not. But the thing is, like G two is not that type of team. Nico, uh, Hunter, and JKS especially is not that type of player. And he's gonna, besides the fact that you know, like he's gonna get tilted, that he's dying like that. And I can tell you for for hundred percent accuracy, that's that's true. So anyway, uh, let's go again with this type of round. Like I said, they're going in. They're dying. They get the nade. But even, like I said, three people coming in right here. One is just smoking. He doesn't even have additional flash. Justin has just a smoke and that's it. They all die and the round is pretty much over after that. Now this is a full Glock round. I don't know. Nobody wants to see that. Let's skip the, through that one. And we go into the first gun round. Now let's see what happens. They're full. Five AKs. No op, but full utility. Let's see how this one works out. Nico is going with an entry smoke. Now the idea with this entry smoke, guys, is um, the idea for this entry smoke is to cause some uh, uh, cause some cause some problems from the CT. Deny their vision right here and possibly get yourself to this position or even this position. So once you actually, if you try to go into the outside split, you need to use two smokes rather than these three or you know additional three here you can just use two smokes but depends on the strat it doesn't really matter you can throw this smoke and don't do anything you can just be passive it doesn't really matter it's up to you as as a player now let's see what they do here it seems like a little bit of a ramp pressure yeah they pressured ramp to cause some some nades being used from the cts nothing really happens here and they go back to i believe the two smokes yeah, the smoke's outside, Justin stays in lobby, smoke's outside. I mean, they can actually do it from a little bit closer spot, but this is fine too, the timing is good. I'm always looking for the timer for the smokes at 125 to 120. Now, why am I saying that is because um, once you do it at 125, 120, it gives you the maneuver to actually go back, or if something goes wrong, you can go back, you can change the call, but if you do it at like 50 second mark, then you're pretty much stuck with one simple play, and then it's very readable and, and, and so on. So far, so good for G2. They're doing these things. Now Nico dies. Let's see how Nico died. Now this is a very important thing right here. His death is a very important thing because it, it, it kind of messes up the whole strat. 
So they're doing the, let's see, where is Nico? He's, he decided to be a little bit defensive. So he's doing one of the smokes. I think that's the deep, the, the middle one. The molly, he's waiting for the flash. Okay, he picked before the smoke. Now let's see from the Zyvu's perspective how that looked like. Zyvu comes back. So Nico picked there before the smoke. Uh, let's see, obviously, like I said, I have no, no comms. So I don't know what happened. So there is a couple of possibilities what happened here. Now, if you examine this, people will say just nothing like, or they're going to blame Nico. They might as well, Nico might as well it, it been his fault. Now, the things that can happen here is like he either called the flash too early because the smoke was, you know, bouncing, you can hear it. And then he died, which is 100% Nico's fault. And he should not be doing that. And that's something that you practice. And it was 100% his fault. Now that's op option one. Option two is that somebody was late with the smoke, whoever threw that smoke that's supposed to cover that spot. Now that's option number two. And then he picked because he miscalculated the timing and something was off from the what they were doing on practice. So that's option number two. The option number three, the place, uh, the person who uh, posted, a, who posted, who uh, threw a flash uh, for Nico, threw it early, so Nico tried to use it and then he died. Let's see how it looks like from this perspective. So he does a molly. That's Monesi with the flash. Now, I don't know if that's was too early or whoever before. I was. I would like to hear the comms. Uh, I would like to hear the comms for this one. And then, you know, decide. Okay, now, okay. The, the thing with this, with this frag, tell me how many players are gonna miss this type of frag in tier one scene. Now, this is a very important trade, right? That didn't happen. This was a nine out of 10 kill for any kind of, any player right here. It has to be a kill. Anyway, he missed it. This was terrible, but he missed it. And the round is pretty much over at that point. Justin has no value whatsoever in this uh, in this round. And then he's just going to end up dying. But the thing is that I want to mention is like I want to go to the CT side of this round. Because the CT's made a play. This is not all about the T's and mistakes or whatever it is, trades. But the CT's made a really good play. So if you, if you can see it here, that mag is, as soon as they pressured him a little bit, he kind of spammed back. He just watched like if they pop out. I don't know if he's going to spam. He threw a molly and then he decided to go and push secret together with, I believe it was Pinks. So Magisk is going here. Now it's Dupree. Yeah, it's Dupree. They decided to counter their outside play with fighting with five people outside. But yeah, four or five people outside. So you have see Zaivu and Apex fighting outside together. Sphinx is kind of watching upper with his nine HP, and then have double push from the, from uh, you know, from Secret. So now this can be a, a just a, uh, this can be two things right now. It can be um, the fact that they counter strata them. And when they realize, okay, when they do the smokes after they pressure ramp, they usually go outside, so we're going to counter them with this. Or it can be a preset play they do on practice when they want to counter any kind of outside smokes. So this is one of those two things I would like to hear from one of the players from Vitality, which one is true or... Because I don't think it's a random thing. I think it's a very well set presetting or it's a pre anti -shred. Anyway, 4-0, we saw the mistake from Nico, possibly. We saw the bad trade from... Uh, from uh, Hooksy, and then we saw obviously this play from Vitality, which was pretty good. I mean, even I don't think even if Nico, if Nico didn't die there, if they went to Secret, I think they would die probably, and the round would be a little bit messed up. Immediately timeout for uh, G2. I like that. I'm a really big fan of early timeouts to you know cancel any kind of momentum. Now they have five four techs, and Monesi has a P250 because he needs the op. Let's see what they do. Another upper hit. Now this time, let's see what happens this time. 
this is again the, the the bullshit rounds that I don't really like. Okay, they committed more people. I think they committed what four people instead of three last last time. Let's see again. I'm gonna do the free look. One, two, three, four, five. Just hunter flashing the pop flash, couple of smokes, flashes, and going in. Now this is again something that you should absolutely never do, especially you know against a team that's that's vitality that has heavy main presence that has you know uh, very skilled and seasoned players on that upper side who know how to deny rush. Now the thing is that's that's one thing. The second thing is. Again, you have players who thrive in different type of situations, whose strengths are different. The deagles, the pre-aims, the slow peaks, the creating spacing for space for them, and then let them cook. <laughs> let them, you know, shoot people and let them, you know, just uh, get the rounds for you. This is just a uh, bad call, straight up. I, I probably it worked on practices, so they practiced it or whatever it is, and it worked against lesser teams, or I don't even know what, what the hell was it. But it's something that you should never do. If I am G2, I'm I'm deleting these type of strats in my playbook for new. Anyway, 5-0 instantly. We have, you know, very quickly turned into a 0-5 for them. Let's see what they do now. Fast smokes. Looks like that. Justin is trying to get out of the vent. This is pretty good so far. Spacing is a little bit tough, but it's the best possible, I guess. And now JKS dies. Now the thing is like let's let's rewind a little bit. Let's rewind a little bit with Justin. So basically, let's see what he did. Basically, you get a little bit of help. This is what Justin does the best. This is what we, you know, kind of mastered when we were back in Renegades Country Thieves. He gets the kill. Let's see how he dies. Okay, he goes to vent, but Zy now this is People would probably ask, oh, why he go down to vent? He already got the kill. This is a good call from Justin. Like, he tried to connect his uh, connect himself with the rest of the team. Zaiwu is in a good spot. Usually Zaiwu doesn't start all that much in secret, especially because in the first gun round, they went double secret together. So he went here. Sorry, I want to sneeze. So, uh, so they he got caught, but it's not a big deal because he created a little bit of space and he revealed the position of Zaiwu so they can move accordingly. Now, the, the idea here, if you are Hooksy, you know that Zaiwu doesn't have an op, so maybe you can switch your call into a leather base or some sort of a upper hit, but let's see what they do. So they decide to commit. Now, that's the problem, right? The, even though this might be a good call, right, in, in bunch of situations. Right now, as an IGL, you need to recognize just what I said. We spotted Zaivu, he doesn't have a knob. We only have Apex probably outside somewhere, but you can see it on the map. He's like right here alone. He doesn't have help from the from the ramp players, most likely, because they want to leave ramp open in this kind of scenario. It doesn't really matter. The point is you need to recognize this an IGL and change the call mid-round. We don't they don't have the knob. Probably leather base is safe. We, I mean safe, e easier to take, and then you change the call and and go leather base and try to split because again you have the players to do so who can recognize these these things in the little gaps anyway let's see what they do they decide to go to secret okay so far so good they get clear vents okay i don't know nico is just grabbing a grenade or something and now they Jesus Christ, okay. They just die, apparently. Let's, let's see what happens. I was watching what Nico does. So, let's see. Hunter, Hooksy, Nico. Oh my god. Uh, that, this is the thing. This is the thing. I have to, again, criticize Hooksy for this one. This is just something that's very strange to see. Basically, he was covering. You see which angle he's covering? I, I don't know if I can see this one. He's covering this angle. If a person wants to peek from this he need, and kill the guy who is throwing the smokes and the nades, he needs to be swinging all the way right. So Hooksy needs to watch this angle. Mag is peaked. And he just killed the guy who was on the nade, which was Hunter. I'm pretty sure Hunter would be tilted with that one. And 
it's a pretty bad thing to see. And then let's see if there is a trade coming up after that. No. He's late. He pulls out the nade. Mon meanwhile, Monesi and Nico die without a trade. And there you go. That's another mistake. They had a decent situation. The call wasn't so good. Like I said, I mean, it's easy for me to say, like, but it's just a common sense, right? It's just a, a natural thing that you practice and you recognize these situations and they didn't do it. They just stick to their call. They went outside and this is why it's 6-0. One of the additional things what helped them get into 6-0 is like, let's look at Hunter. Now, if Hooksy was watching that angle, why would he watch the, 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 the closer angle? Because the guy needs to re-pick, needs to pick like super wide to get him. There's no trade, he dies there, and it's all over. So it's 6-0 right there. Let's see what happens with the next one. Half by. If they go upper one more time, I'm going to tilt. Okay, smokes outside. Diagonal smokes. Apex tries to block it. But then again, they're hitting the upper side. See where Apex is. He's trying to block it off. He tries to block off the entrance to the main. He's a pretty, pretty far away, which is kind of a good thing for, for G2. They do the upper hit, but Zaiwu is like super close. He's waiting for the call if it's fake or not. Even if you put, you can see how difficult this thing is, right? Even if Nico gets a headshot and a half. Now the thing is like, it's very, even if you pull the rotation like they did, you see where Apex all the way went all the way into the, into the warehouse. Even if you pull the rotation like that, you, your chances of winning that round are very slim, simply because they have the counter utility and they have the rotation from the, from the leather base or, or ramp coming in very quickly. And you obviously have the positional advantage and the weapon advantage and all the possible advantages you have. Nico managed to get a couple of shots in. And um, I think he planted the bomb. Yeah, he planted the bomb. And basically, they got the most they could possibly get. Another call that I'm not really agreeing with, uh, it's just uh, not utilizing your players properly is the biggest problem right here. Okay. Let's see what they call it. It's a second timeout right now. It is fast smokes. Nico running in first, getting a play there. JKS gets a play. Let's see what happens. Let's watch Nico. Let's watch Nico and then JKS. JKS pressuring the door again. Nico gets the good spawn. He's she's getting the main fast. He just missed Zaivu. He gets the kill there. And then JKS gets a kill on ramp. It's a 5v3. Nico is kind of stuck there. So he dies. Now you need to make a call right here if you are an IGL, right? You know that op. Let me see. You know that op is outside. And then you know that you kill the ramp guy. So what you can do is split right here. You can split with the secret with three people because you're in a position and tell Justin to wait on ramp and maybe he catches a flank or something like that. That's the that's the call that would make the most sense in that situation. You don't want to go back to uh, main because the op can still be there on leather base or a locker room or something because you can end up dying, but you just want to go straight to secret if you possibly can and, and you know, try to win around there because you have a lot of utility. You have one, two, three, four mollies, a couple of flashes, smoke to cover something up that you want to cover and then execute Justin still has a, a good lurk and good timing right there. Let's see what happens. going in slowly i wish they were just a little bit faster in this case because they are just giving zaivu time to reposition right because he already showed himself in warehouse he's gonna take time before before he actually you know gets in a good position but they decided to give him that space and they're going slow not the worst thing i mean i would have called it something faster but this is also decent let's see and uh, you can see uh, this is the difference right this is the difference between Hunter and Hooksy. Just look at the round before that where Hooksy was uh, Hunter was doing nades and Hooksy was 
Covering, you see what Hooksy does and what Hunter does. This was supposed to happen in the first round, and the, the, the outcome would be completely different. But, okay. Okay, he comes, comes out. Oh my god. These trades. Apex should never get two there, but the thing is, like, I think... <laughs> I think Monesi just missed a clear shot there. Let me watch Monesi a little bit. Okay, Monesi, Monesi. Oh, he missed the shot. He allowed that to be a, a two for one. JK has got the, the, the drop on Zaivu. Oh, got the drop on Dupree, and this was it. So that's the round number one. A little dicey, but the call was good. Mid-round call was good. The trades were not so good, but, you know, some things were better, so they got them the round. See what happens here. Mother door pressure from Justin, but he's not going anywhere close. Nico doing his thing outside. I think they want to get Justin into the vent or something. But they got smoked, so he decided not to go for it. Taking it slow right now. Okay, this is better. I already like this because it's uh, outside smokes from a closer spot. But Nico gets spotted. And he decides to go in. Oh my God. He gets the timing on, on Spinks. Now again, this is a, another difficult situation for the T's because Nico, he traded one for one. Justin is in a good spot and uh, it's it's a very hard thing to call because if you already went secret a couple of times, so Zaibu might be waiting there on some sort of stairs or anything and you don't know where the apex was. He didn't show himself whatsoever, so the call is quite difficult to make. And uh, in, for me, I would definitely try, because of this utility, I would probably try to smoke off main and try to go leather base simply because i haven't been there and they're probably expecting me in in secret and magus is a player who doesn't really rotate to upper all that much he just rotate to locker room or secret or down the silo but it's just whatever so i think justin is making a play here so this is the best thing with, with justin i think justin is gonna get the kill there yeah he's gonna get the kill there i think he heard I think he heard Dupree drop after the Spinks got killed. Let me see if I can hear this. Maybe I want volume. So Nico gets the timing. Let's hear what Justin hears. Spinks is gonna get killed. In a few seconds, I believe. So he doesn't hear anything right now yet. Aha. Okay, so he heard the spray from Top Hat and he heard the drop. So he probably thought that the is going to be around vent or in vent. So he decided to, to, to go in. This is a perfect, perfect individual call this is the this is what you need from your players to react to these things now i don't know if somebody like again i don't have the comps if somebody told them or he did it by himself but whatever it was he did it correctly so he tries to go out he's looking for dupree because he heard him being in that spot and if he's in down in vent he's down in vent then um it's a uh, site is clear so they decide to go upper Hooksy has a smoke for main. Honestly, dies a little bit weird there. Another big kill from Justin. They have a smoke main, which is pretty good. Another big kill from Justin. So Justin pretty much individually got them this kill with a good reaction and good space that Nico created for him. Now, this is the thing that, that people like don't understand when it comes to these high-skilled players and how this space works and how reacting to created space works. So this is pretty much a perfect example of how in a, in a basic situation, it should be done. Anyway, good, good, good round from G2, especially from Justin. CTs call a timeout right here. 
door pressure, Hooksy hot pressure, Justin tries to go in, I think. Gets dinked. Why did he go back? The hell? Could he just fall him back? Like the idea for this thing is like to pressure, you know, a little bit hot and door and just explode through the through the door so maybe you can get because you can see non Nico throwing a bunch of nades and they're covering each other there and Hooks is ready to go in from hot, but Justin got dinked, he could have fallen back. And he didn't he died. Anyway, let's see what happens next, what the call is. They're all four in lobby. Now this is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> now this is a problem already right let me let me rewind this thing for you not just in dying that's not the initial problem or the biggest one the problem the, the, is that they don't have the outside presence whatsoever so he dies here see he won't he went back and then he went you know forward again so the problem right here is that you have nothing outside, no presence, no flashes, no smokes, no anything. So there is no reason for the CTs to even help here or do anything. Basically Apex is going to hear everything and maybe Magus can just spot a little bit sometimes, but you don't have to do bleeding with literally nothing because the seat, the T's are not going to walk around outside, especially with Zaibu having an op. And especially because they were like down in secret a couple of times already. So it's just a, a big problem for for G2 to actually do anything right now. And then we see Hunter doing a little bit crazy thing. I think it, it's not like it looks crazy and it is crazy, but I can understand it in a way because he saw the gap. He saw the gap that he can use with the bomb. I don't know if he, he knew he had the bomb. I wish I knew. And he, you see, he mollied main and, you know, he kind of got the bomb that he has a smoke to drop it in front of the door if he needs to. Yeah. And then he planted the bomb. Now the the this was a very good sequence right here. They're trying to get into ramp. Good trades. Yep, this is a perfect trade. One for one. Nico stays on the flank, which is again good play because he knows that there was a there was a bunch of people upper, and Hunter was on already in vents, so they had to go through this area. He gets a kill on the pre. I don't know. He dies probably here. Yeah. But the CTs decide to save. And that's another another round for G2. Now, this is based on two rounds so far, based on the reactions and the opportunities they saw. So overall, it's a it's a pretty uh pretty good rounds for G2. Now, this is what I'm saying. Like, you need to give these type of players this type of game, right? It cannot be uh uh upper strats, you know, you just need to give them those those type of games. Now number eleven. Slow default, then we're doing the smokes, 136, good timing. Now I don't understand why Nico did this. Why would he, what? Let's see what he did. I guess he gambled, but this was a mistake from Nico, 100%. I guess he gambled that Zaibu wasn't going to be there, so I don't really know what was the what was the decision here. Let's see, maybe he played it off because Justin was already in vent. Ah, okay. Okay, so the idea, I guess, was that Justin caused some rotations and Nico thought that the op shouldn't be there, so he kind of tried to use that space to get some decent position for himself, but, you know, it uh, didn't work out, made a mistake overall, but the idea was decent. So let's see what Hooksy calls here. Secret, three people, not enough nades, not a single smoke, but Justin is in vent, so he controls that part. So the, the rotations are a little, little bit scrambled for the CTs. You see, the spacing is not the ideal one. Now, now, if somebody was, you know, somewhere here on the stairs or anything, like in a position to 
with advanced position, there would probably be a bad trade, but Hooksy decides to wait, which is not the the worst thing. I think that's a good thing to do. And they don't have the smokes. They have the mollies, but they don't have the smokes, and that's a problem. Now, what happens here, it's it's very difficult to to enter the site with this type of utility. What you want to do is, I don't know if I can see this. How can I do this for you? So basically what you want to do is like, you need to molly this and flash off this wall and jump out and try to trade. And you hope that, you know, you don't get killed. Yeah, they mollied it. Let's see if the flash comes in. It doesn't, Magus gets there, but he gets killed. Hooksy dies to Apex. Nobody helped Hooksy. I don't know why Monesi was so delayed, but he does get the trade and somehow they ended up in a 3v3. Super slow rotation from Sphinx and Zaiwu, especially. He was expecting somebody to be on the flank because so far they have been on the flank every single time on the flank. So they decided to save here because they didn't know they did so much damage. And again, a messy round, but you know, overall, I don't think the call was bad. The call was decent. But they decided to go. Super, super weird so far. Anyway, it should be 7-4. Yeah. So they just saved a couple of guns. Overall, call was decent. Execution was a little bit here and there. But uh, it helped with the fact that Vitality didn't really rotate whatsoever. So, yeah. Let's see what they call now. Unconfirmed damage through the smoke. Then smoke Nico trying, to, Hooksy trying to get the space early on. This is a little bit of a, I don't understand what happened here because you can see like, let's see. Once he gets tagged, Hooksy starts running, but he's running alone. If somebody was in secret, Hooksy is dead without the possibility of trade. This is a little bit of a miscommunication by them. I don't like to see it, but it, didn't, it wasn't punished. So I guess, fair enough. Now we have double lurk. Now this is something that I'm not really a biggest fan of. The double lurk thing. But I guess Hunter is working towards outside. Fantastic kill. And this is where Justin needs to go back. Now this is where Justin needs to go... Don't go back, go forward, I mean. Uh, the thing is like... I want to say he doesn't want to go back here because he is the lurk and he lost lobby altogether. So basically he needs to, you know, sit in radio and then wait for his turn. Now, Nico died and I'll tell you why he died here. Now, people will be, you know, raging. Oh, he's dying like uh, this or that or whatever. The idea that the play that he made was perfectly fine. Why? I'm going to go again because I missed it. Let's go over Nico. So he was getting ready to go to secret, right? You see, he jumped on the thing. He was getting ready. But then he just waited a little bit for the smoke so he can peek main. And now as soon as Zaiwu dropped, that's the single for Nico that there is no danger from the upper outside and he can try to sneak. The only, you know, kind of danger for him was Apex. But if he shows himself and he shows info there, then Hunter will react and probably take that space altogether. And then we still have people in secret and in radio. So the decision to push here was absolutely justified. And I would do the same. But what happens here, he dies to Magisk. Now, this is a, 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 another trigger situation for Justin. Look at Justin already after that first he'll try to come back. right? And that was a mistake because the cities took lobby at the beginning. Obviously, he didn't know the Sphinx was there. But the thing is, like, if Magisk, that's the ramp player, he showed himself in the lockers by killing Nico. That means that 99% ramp is safe to take it's 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 empty simply because Saivu died here right so there is no op there so there is a, a justin justin's chance to react similar how, to, how he did through the hut so basically he decides to go back and in a 5v4 they ended up in a 3v 4v3 or 3v4 because justin goes back let me see if i can go there and then he ends up dying to spinks yeah he ends up dying to spinks boom so a little bit, now the first thing that I don't understand is Justin going back immediately after that first kill towards ramp, towards radio. 
So basically you will see him like watching this push, he's in a good spot, nothing really bad about this one. They already took Lobby from him, Sphinx is already there, he doesn't know that, so if Sphinx picked here he would be probably dead. But after Nico got the, after Hunter got the kill, I have no idea why is Justin going back on the ladder. If he was going back to that hut, then I would maybe justify the fact that maybe Hooksy called like an uh, upper split or something. But if he called a uh, 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 secret take or whatever, lower take, Justin doesn't need to go back. He doesn't just simply need to go back. He decides to go back, he dies, and then it's a problem. They don't have a lobby, and this is all open to CTs doing whatever they want. And now it's a problem, right, for for G2. Let me see if I can... Okay. It's a problem for G2 because they have no ground whatsoever. Like, Hunter tries to take, but he knows that, you know... Magis was somewhere around here. They still haven't seen Apex whatsoever. Sphinx is in lobby. So basically, they have no exit here whatsoever. The round is pretty much done. They decide to wait for some sort of, you know, opener or some sort of mistake from Vitality. But it doesn't happen. And of course, <laughs> I mean, he pushed, his Sphinx pushed here and uh, because he felt of the timing. And he got the... Like double kill and the round is over right there. Now, that's a problem right there. And you can see how these small things, um, it's a, so all of a sudden it's 8-4, you have no money. You can see how these small things make a difference in these rounds, how players' reaction and players' mistake, how they affect the, 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 the round itself and the game itself. And not just the players' mistake, the players' reaction. For example, Magis leaving ramp in that case and helping out outside, getting the kill on Nico, which was unexpected for Nico, kind of turned that round upside down. And uh, it got them the round eventually, and obviously Spinx finished it up with the kill on Justin and then flanking up and going uh, into the silo. Anyway, another eco round. Glocks. P250s, whatever, nothing really happens here. We can skip this one. And now Monesi is with an op again. Now, so far, they probably practice. Now, I'm not going to bash on this one, but they probably practice with an op all too much and probably work well. And, you know, they used to play with an op, but the op hasn't been delivering all that impact throughout this half. And that's one of the additional reasons why it has been going so well. It costs a lot of money. Uh, we can see here like a over 6k in worth of you know equipment and it doesn't really get you that much and hunter and jks meanwhile and two galils so that's something you know as a coach as a as a igl maybe you want to switch it up and you see it's not working give the aks to some some other players maybe sacrifice an op for a, for a galil and change it up a little bit but that's uh that's a that's that's not like something for the that you can call in the middle of the match unless you're super confident about it, which I don't think Swanny or Hooksy are. So it's just uh, a little bit, you know, something they can they can work on. Anyway, entry smoke. It's a weird entry smoke, but they try to do a boost. Nico gets super close. Now they get. Now this is important. Like this is. Uh, why is this important? Because you get to use one smoke here in the well, once more in the door and one smoke outside and you get all this space now basically apex needs to hide and needs to call for help cyber needs to react to it and basically you only use a couple of grenades and you got all that space offered over that little run boost and one smoke and off that you can call whatever you want if you're idrial you can call anything you want in the middle round depending on where, where jks is what he hears what kind of openings if he, we spot a knob if you hear the rotation there is so many options that you can call because you have one two three one two smokes left I don't know where the third smoke, is, third smoke is, but anyway, they have at least two smokes left to, to smoke whatever they want. They can smoke main and lockers, try to get leather base. They can smoke this and this and try to get secret. They can fake it. They can smoke this and go two people here, fake upper, sneak into the secret as well. There is too many options right there that you can call as an IG, right? After you get additional opener, additional space right here. So let's see what happens. Apex challenging a little bit, but they decide to go for. Uh -huh. They do have three smokes. Okay, it's gonna be a. This is so stupid. Like, look, like they have all this ground and they have to go back here to throw the smokes. Surely you can throw it from here, 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 somewhere, so you don't have to go all the way to the spawn to throw it. But anyway. I guess that's why they did the they didn't go to Rio and just did the bootcamp to not fix this. Three 
three smokes outside, letting Nico play outside alone. They are going towards the ramp tech. Call good as any. I, I don't mind this, uh, you know, usual standard call. The ramp sequence. Good sequence on the ramp. No danger for anyone getting killed outside of maybe somebody being blind. The push from the hut, which was traded immediately. Where is Nico? He's trying to deny the trying to deny the outside like you know flank and so far so good but i think this is the round which they is this the round where they lose 1v4 yeah i think it is maybe not i don't know Oh no, no, that's not the one. It's a pretty good round overall, decent call, good trades. You, you you can see that there is no you don't need some miraculous call, you just need basics to be done properly. You're gonna win the round after you get like the space and whatever you need to get. Right. So it's just pretty simple so far. They got them the round. Nine five is not a bad score line considering how you started, but then you end up in this round. Let's see what the call is. Fast smokes outside. Okay, this is a, this is a play. I, I assume they thought that maybe Zaiwu doesn't have an op, but this is a this is a good play. We call this play Navi. So basically, you throw smoke here, smoke there, and molly here a couple of flashes, and you peek behind the molly to actually try to catch someone from main or this box or somewhere in the locker room or ladder, whatever it is, right? And then you based your play of that. The what G two did, they sent Hunter to use that space if they get if they don't see anyone so they can use and jump over and go to leather and you will see him probably being in leather around 130 something so he doesn't stop he's just running running the flash he's not getting flashed they get a kill on apex yeah they get the kill on apex he starts running they decide to stay a little bit outside JKS is playing smart here now this is important for JKS right here guys I know I'm going into details but this is what you want now, if you already get that, look at the hunter is. So you get the opener, you get the 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 space that you need. You're all the way here together. So if something goes wrong here, you can still go go to secret if you want, or if you get a kill, you can just fall back and go into the upper side. And important for Justin is to not lose lobby control. So if Justin loses his life, this is cut off right right here. So you have no position on the map. So he decides to go full defensive, which is a super good call from him. He has a molly that he, he can clear something, or maybe he can push off the ramp push if needed in the post plant or whatever it is. And he's playing it defensive. That is super important. Anyway, let's see what happens. He uses the molly for some reason, but whatever it is, they get the kill. It's a 5v2. Nico charging, dying. Monesi could have been with him, but the trade comes in still. And now we have that famous round. Hunter spots Zaiwu. That's a great kill from Zaiwu. They already know where he is. Bomb is planted. He didn't hear him drop. I don't understand why would he peek whatsoever upper, but these two guys should have been traded this guy now this is a this is a mess of around so i'm not gonna even comment on this one anymore so uh that's 10 5 and you can see like what what happened during those 15 rounds a lot of things happened like it's not just like what we see on the screens what we like hear from the commentators say a lot of things happened on this on this specific part and it's just only 15 rounds in so let's see what happens next They have a kit, no kit. That's a pretty risky move, to be honest. Like having no kit in a 5-10 scoreline, it's just a little bit. But I guess they pr probably practiced this thing so many times and it works well for them. So they start with, uh, how did they start? So Monesi had a smoke and a ber uh, dual Beretta. So if they break the door, so the idea is that if they break the door, he can smoke the door and try to kill them while they're running out of smoke or trying to get into vent. Uh, Hooks is with a, with a flash, probably going to flash uh, somewhere upper or maybe outside for whoever is outside. Hunter is, uh -huh. so basically 
he would flash behind this little box so he doesn't flash hunter if they're going outside from the hut and then we have nico who is probably going secrets right yeah why is he walking i don't know why is he walking but he could have run there because hooks is spotting eh, whatever um maybe they can hear him from lobby anyway he's pushing outside trying to get any kind of info he sees nothing but there is somebody outside that's saivu he decides to go back to help with the ramp take now justin is was on ramp i can i don't want to go back to this one but overall i think that kill from justin and the rotation from nico kind of messed up the call for apex and vitality so they decided to Switch it up a little bit, they lost it in the end. Probably going to go full eco after this one. I don't know why Mag is bot, but whatever. Everybody has dig everybody has Glocks. He's just gonna try something. I don't know if anybody wants to see this round. And then there is the first gun round. No ops, no nothing. Wanna see Nico playing outside, double molly, trying to prevent uh, push with triple set up on upper one main two side honestly he's kind of on the off angle he blocks the smoke and creates a gap for himself oh yeah i remember this round he's gonna get a triple here he doesn't get flash good position he gets a triple and it's a 4v2 he already saw it's a 4v2 he spotted the fourth player so we know where the fourth player is and we don't know where Spinks is we know that he's a lurker he might be in lobby lurk. he might be outside he might be anywhere right so what is the decision that g2 does let's see nico is in secret he decides to go down vent to block off magus if he crossed he goes back why is hooksy going with him what the hell is this so the <laughs> now the decision to push here is absolutely <laughs> It's absolutely unnecessary. Now, this push, from what I see here, I don't want to bash on Hooksy unnecessary without any proof, but from what I can see here, Nico wanted to go back. Hooksy decided to push, and he probably called Nico to push together. Now, why do you? Why would you do something like this? Because you have control over everything. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Nico is ready to go to vent and he's blocking off main. One, two, three kills. 4v2. And Nico decides to block off that. Now, look at where Hunter is. Look at where Hunter is. They have full control of the lobby. Justin has full control of the outside from the, you know, he can go and uh, go into the lockers. after the, Because Hunter is where he is. Hooks, Nico is going to block off... Uh, secret i guess justin needs to needs to stop them from going uh, leather base and then we have hooksy who is supposed to be somewhere on top hut watching so basically his position should have been on top hut watching either main or being inside or being in like with hunter even though you can even let them take the site if they want but let's see what he does watching the same thing that hunter was so okay being careful that's fine but he decides to push here like why why would you go for this type of situation now again maybe it was nico's call maybe it was hooks's call it does look like hooks's call but that's why i'm calling it like that hunter has full lobby he's deciding to go back justin has like radio and he's decided to stay with hunter so they're playing this perfect hooksy dies nico stops and he gets cleared by I want to see how they ended up in the lobby in the first place. I think they made a, they had a set play. Okay. So basically they're blocking off. Aha, uh -huh, okay. So Nico is setting up a flash. He's going to be in the corner. One, two, smoke. Okay, that's a that's a lobby take pretty good one. I have to admit. But after that, what happened was just un unforgivable. This is like this. This type of push is getting your opponents to 
uh, 11 7 and then possibly 12 7 and if you lose that one then you're done but let's see what happens they lose this they're still in a in a very weird spot hunter and jks they don't know what the hell is going on are they gonna go secret are they gonna go up or lower now the control of the map is completely lost you see how those things changed they had a full control of the map just seconds ago and with that unnecessary push they lost complete control of the map like everything is gone right now and i need to guess where the tts are gonna go they decide to go secret one way smoke they clear it there's nobody down just in trades but he gets traded spinks one on one and he clutches this and that's a problem now if you see why is that a problem the round is around is not is one one problem but look at the money on the ct side 1.5 1 1.7 5k hook c 3.9 2.9 on Nico. now decide to buy which is i guess you have to you just at this point you have to i would like to see a timeout here to just call something proper because you're buying this something that's unusual now why would i as a coach call a timeout here is something because we are approaching around in a very dangerous like uh, moment that we didn't practice whatsoever this is a force buy with one two pistols op a famas and mp9 so this is round that we haven't practiced we don't know what to do so that's why i'm calling a timeout to see how many smokes we have who is going to open where where is going to go where my op is going to go so what do i need to do so use those 30 seconds to kind of make this thing clear but they didn't do that fair enough i guess you don't have to but something that i would do opener normal opener with two people upper nico is trying to help you can see four people in lobby nico is there now the reason why nico is is uh close to main and close to upper is because monesi is controlling outside the problem is that justin is alone and these people are upper are pretty much screwed because they don't have guns right they have don't have proper guns and barely any utility left uh, i think the smoke is a little bit gap yeah yeah and you can see that the fact that hunter doesn't have a gun hooksy doesn't have a gun they lose the trades just a pop up upper from vitality and just an easy round a little bit improvised but based on the fact that g2 had no utility or guns now why didn't have utility or guns because they fucked up in a 5v2 with that push and all these things that happened and they put themselves in a very rough spot because of that that's just the way it is full eco with the monesi trying to get something done now this is oops this is uh i guess all right monesi going for the kill here he, the, the door is broken he gets the opener but let's see how how the t's react now the problem here for the t's right now because they're usually when you spot in a situation like this where you know they're the, the the pistols and plus one op when the op shows and kills one person from your team and right? he kill eliminates one of the players you wanna use that info that you got and sacrifice one player to get some ground usually you would just storm down somewhere a couple of flashes and go go down but they are so spread apart you can see where dupree is apex is on an island and they only have two people towards ramp and it's super super difficult. They decide to go slow sometimes that can be very difficult for your team but sometimes it's just it works zaibu rotates to leather which is a decent rotation because the normal reaction from the t's would be to go outside and try to use it against you but they go ramp and zaivo gets a triple here on jks was able to get only one but overall a good try from monesi didn't work really work out but uh good try overall and now we get into the very dangerous territory let's see what g2 does we don't have the knob again on monesi because he didn't have any money him and nico are facing outside going for an aggressive setup see nico is like in front of the smoke and monesi is trying to help him they get a combination of kills now this is a little bit of a mess from vitality because usually when this thing happens let me see usually when you get dinked and you get like a little bit aggressive and you don't know where the t's are you kind of freeze 
You don't want to go, especially not without the flash. You see how Apex ran without the flash. Zai would try to help. He died to Monesty from the second spot, and uh, then Dupree died alone. Basically, once this happened, once you get dinged, once you get like a lot of utility going on on that side of the map very early on, you want to call freeze, right? You want to just stop it and just call off the whatever you called it, the freeze time. But they probably didn't want to do it simply because uh, they used the smokes right here, so they didn't want to waste them. They gambled a little bit. And the fact that Apex just charged, I don't know, the comms, maybe he, he called them to go with him. They didn't. And maybe he didn't say anything and he went alone and I would try to trade and pretty much round was over at that point. So that's 13-8. Let's see what happens in the next one. Pones Nico, aggressive outside again. It's a very dangerous angle to hold when you have no op and you know the opponents can have an op. Nico gets a kill, very, very weird, very weird trade there in the positioning here. This was supposed to be around for vitality based on the mistakes that Monesi and Nico made early on. I don't think they were communicating properly to what's going on because I don't know what... I guess Nico was doing his early nades and he tried to stop any early pushes, but then he went to kind of block off the door a little bit more, but him and Mones here in some sort of a same angle trying to get the kill, but it was super weird. Like even the, the T's were like doing unusual things. You can see the leather, the blocker smoke and everything that's going on there. Now, and you can see what happened here. Spinks is gonna try to walk out, I believe. Yeah, he's gonna try to walk out. He's gonna die, I remember this. Now, this is the similar thing where in the first half, if you remember what Justin did. Now, this is a decent call from from uh, from Pinks to go for it. Because Nico died outside and Monesi died outside. So he thought that there is going to be some sort of rotation. See what he hears. So he heard Hunter. Let, let's, let's, let's go back to this one. I'll shut up so you can hear it yourself. Okay, so he heard he heard that Hunter or somebody dropped into the vent or close to the vent, similar to what Justin did against Dupree, but he decides not to go in, which was at that moment a wise decision because Hooksy was waiting. He's still waiting. I would probably go out and this one probably would die, would have died, and Justin or many players would probably go out and died. But he hears a step again, drop into the side. He beats a molly. So nobody peeks on the left side and he knows that the guy is in the side, but probably on the right side or the deep left. I don't know if he's going to clear the deep left, but he knows that it's either deep left or far right. So he clears the deep left. So he knows he's on the right side here. But he just misses the frag. It's a, it's a bad shooting from him, but the decision was... Uh, the decision was was good. I think it's going to cost them the round at the end. So basically now they have lost any kind of lobby presence. They don't know where the remaining guys are. They don't know. They know that Hunter might be in vent. Because that's what Spinks called. Hooksy is spotting two things. JKS uses the smoke unnecessary. Use it for the door so maybe Hooksy can clear it and go to the CT vent. But... Yeah, this is what he does. This is a good call from Hooksy, but he should have been in the vent. Hunter gets a kill on, on Dupree. I don't know why Dupree was back there. Yeah. Okay. So, this is individual from Hunter. He really delivered two frags that are really super important. He was alone. And uh, let's see how on this 1v2. I think G2 wins this one. Yeah, Mag is trying to isol isolate people here. I mean, it was the best possible thing he could have done in the clutch. But Justin was in the right spot and he traded that. 39. Forced by by Vitality. Let's see. Monesi has an op now. He's starting from, I'm assuming, leather. 
Oh yeah, they're expecting an upper hit. So you can see like there is four people here. So this is an anti-strat, 100%. This must be an anti-strat because you would never start like this because if you want to expect a force buy upper hit, this is how you would probably set up. You see where Hunter is, you see where Nico is, Monis is ready to kill the first guy coming out of hut and then drop down probably and help the teammates. So they want to win the round right there. But nothing really happens. Monesi goes back. Let's see what the T's do. They're waiting. Nico is searching behind the smoke a little bit. Overexposed, but didn't get punished, so it's fine. Still super slow. Nothing really happening outside, so there is no reason for Nico to go into search, search into anything. He's super slow here because he doesn't know they're coming out, so... They ended up running upper. Monesi got that first kill. And by this time, round is up completely over. So there is nothing that really can stop this from happening. And Vitality lost this one. So 13-10. Now, I'm assuming this is a half buy. Because the money bonus is as it is. And they have extra money on Matrix, who dropped the AKF to Zaivu. Maybe Zai could, Zaivu could have gone for... The big Kevlar, but the, he, I guess he knew they have three AKs, so it doesn't really matter all that much. Trying to take Ram. I mean... This is good as try as any. I don't know where Nico died. Hunter Hooksy getting the kills and somehow they survived this. Nico died in a wrong spot there. He was surprised or whatever that happened. Anyway, gun around coming in. The next one. He's one of the biggest ones so far. They're blocking the upper push again. Instant smokes. Where is Monesi trying to get a, something to smoke? He does reveal himself that he is on that side. So they might hurry up going to secret. Which would be the wise call. Now, when the ops shows up and there is no flash coming in, any kind of counter flash after you throw these smokes, usually you would try to use that space and go to secret at least with one or two people, right? Depending on what you called in the freeze time. If you want to go one, four, or just maybe one guy creating chaos in secret. But whatever it is, you want to use that space before somebody else comes along and he rotates back. So that's what they did. So they decided. Let's see what happens here. Nico is on main. Monesi is warehouse. Let's see what the positioning is like. It looks like some sort of a fake. But nothing really happens. Like this is the problem, like sometimes for Apex, because they end entry with this like defaults, but they don't know what to do if after nothing happens. So usually when you have like some sort of a trace, you usually know what you want to do, but outside of Monesi showing himself and they dropping a little bit of utility. They have no idea where the CTs are unless he gets a, a pick on Dupree and he rotates. Now this triggers the secret, people from secret, to go and search, but it's already 4v5, so... Oh yeah, Nico dies to a crazy headshot. Nico could have played a little bit more defensive there, but... Nico, as he, as he is, like he is never going to play defensive unless he has like 1 HP or something, but... And I don't really blame him that much because he is probably, you know, has better aim than 99% of the people. But it was a good shot by Magisk. Well, let's see this this frag. Okay. Now Nico is ready. They're probably going to go at him right now. JKS is blocking ramp. Hooksy and Hunter are upper. Now this is a crazy headshot, but, you know, Nico died for nothing there. It's a bit of a dangerous situation here. Justin's trying to get there. They are getting into lower, but very slow because they don't know who else is going to be there. Maybe Monis is there. Maybe JKS is behind the clock or in dark or anything. Hunter gets a kill on Apex who was searching towards main. This is a problem with the main mid-round call. I don't think Apex was sure what he wants to call and ended up calling nothing, which pretty much kind of cemented the round for... Cement and they're out for G2, even though they planted the bomb, got them the money. So, I think Nico, you know, dying here kind of gave them a shot, but they didn't know what to call. 
ended up calling nothing, so they lost this. Uh, let's see another another gun round. Seem to be setting up for an upper hit. Now this is another one of those upper hits that I'm not really a big fan of, because you can see like let's let's pause it right here. You can see like two people throwing stuff, and uh, three people coming in. That's always a, a problematic thing because depending i guess who you play against but it's just uh not very easy to get in the site like that but that's something that you fall back onto when your defaults are not working when you're like outside strats are not working when something that's called plan b plan c whatever you want to call let's see what happens here so hooks is in a pretty good spot he hears the nades he hears the mollies the reason the reason why he is here and not in the little corner is because people usually molly that and i guess you can get Flashed easier. I'm not really sure, but that's what I would say. He's not flashed. You see this one. I mean, I guess he got one and he should have gotten two. I mean, I usually don't, don't uh, slam people for missing shots. Because I don't think that's uh, that happens, but I guess this was supposed to be a double kill here. Maybe he looked at the radar because the reaction was like a little bit slow. Maybe probably Spinks would trade him. I I don't know. It that doesn't really matter. They Hunter gets a kill. Nico hears the reload and reacts and gets a kill there. So overall, the upper hit didn't work this time. Again, and it's just uh, very difficult to go in. 13-13. Half by, and this is the round they lose. I, I think they lose to an upper hit, if I remember correctly. Another opener here, outside. Nico is close to main in case they actually, you know... Now, this is a, a, a thing that, you know, I'm not really a big fan of. For example, being here... Maybe they thought they were they have full money bonus and they're gonna buy full, so they decided to go aggressive against pistols. You wouldn't rather usually go here, but like I said, I don't have the comp, so I don't know what they expected. Anyway, Monesi is rotating back to upper, which is actually no, upper would be a good thing, but he took ramp, so Justin can go and go secret and, and block that top. But the hit comes in. I have to look at this movement on the upper side to see like what the hell happened. I was focused on Justin. So they do the nades for the side. He drops a molly. Hunter is watching door. He drops down. Makes a lot of sound. Oh, this they they they, they were in a bad spot and they got flashed. And let me see what hooks he did. I think Hunter got flashed. He made too much noise. He dropped down. They heard that. They executed. And I think he got flashed. I'm gonna re I'm gonna replay this a couple of times more. So So there's a lot of lot of noise. He spams a little bit. Okay, he wasn't flashed. But why was Hookseed peeking on that side? Interesting. Now the thing is they were completely out of position on this one. Hunter could have gotten double. Let's see what Hooksy does. Man, I fucked up. Sorry guys. Let's see this again. So the idea for you, like if you have a player where Hunter was, you wanna watch your right side. Right, and you have a. You probably had Monesi gonna be on the on the ladder there, so I don't know why he picked on the left and exposed himself com completely to the door because Hunter can spot his door, right? Let's see this. So, okay, so they're coming out. If you go and pick to the left, right? If you pick to the left, you're exposed to hut and door, and if somebody actually nobody can beat through main because Nico is there, but hut and door, right? 
If you go only to the right, you will get the attention off you, on you, and you will probably, you know, Hunter will probably get a double, you will get a, 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 a single kill, most likely, if you're not getting flashed. And Monesi is very fast on the rotation because he's close to you. He should be closer, but he's relatively close. Let's call it like that and see what happens. See, he goes to the left and exposes himself. Oh, this is the thing. Let me see if I can. So you are exposed to door. Let's see if I can. Yeah. Exposed to door, hut, and all the flashes that are coming in through the door and through the roof. He gets, I don't know if he got that kill. He probably did. And um, that's just a mistake right there. He gets punished. He gets no kills. No kills. Ooh. Hunter gets one, he gets traded, Monesi is up, he doesn't get anything, 3v3, still a manageable round, not really uh, something that, you know, that's not winnable, but Apex is flanking, he gets a good timing here, like this is very weird, he gets traded, and now we have Justin, who is playing this very smart. The bomb has not been planted. Sphinx is on 14. I don't know if they know that or not, but Magis has the bomb, but Justin is waiting for the vent to drop. Many teams will drop vent, and Justin will get a double here. Many teams. But Vitality decides not to do so, and they start and decide to go with the upper upper play. Monesi is playing this safe as possibly can, which is a fair thing. I don't think he's doing anything wrong here. Justin, here's the plan. He decides to go. And he misses the shot. So he missed seven bullets. If one bullet hit, it would be a 2v1 or 1v1, which would be a manageable thing, but he missed it. Again, one of the shots that got missed, so it's a little bit problematic. Now 14, 13. G2 still has a lot of money. Last time out. Let's see what they do. Monas is starting ramp. Miko blocking off outside, Monas is starting a ramp. Is somebody going with him? Yeah, JKS is. I like this. I, I don't mind this at all. Making a play at 14.30, Nico gets a kill on Apex. And I do think he gets spammed. Yeah, he got spammed. Now at this moment, this is a problem for G2. Nico's death is a problem here. Now, the way he died is not to, you know, you can't really blame him all that much because he got spammed through the smoke. He was in the line of fire, but... You know, it was a lucky spam. Anyway, the problem for G2 is because they have no outside presence whatsoever. Now, the CTs can go here, can go into main, can go leather base, can go warehouse, whatever it is they want. Now, you need to gamble this because you haven't showed your op yet. So, they are, any normal team wouldn't go for a sneak outside on 14 30. So, this is what you, you play the odds here. Now, you, you assume they won't sneak up on 14 13, knowing, not knowing where your op is. If Monesi shoot shot, then yeah, they, they probably would be running into secret or hell other base or whatever. But Monesi hasn't shown yet. So, that's what they're gambling on. They are staying uh, two upper, two ramp. And let's see how Monesi reacts to this situation. Still waiting, nothing really happens, which is a good call. He's getting Justin into position. Justin is in a, in a very good spot to get at least one or two kills, and then Monesi leaves to take care of outside. This is also a good good decision from CTs to stay too upper. I don't know why Hooksy is going here. What is he trying to do to clear with him? I guess I can understand that, but uh, staying upper would be the call for hunter and him and this is what they do now as far as i can see vitality is getting ready for an upper hit or vent dive now let's see where monesi is monesi is outside a little bit too far away from any kind of help but he's recognizing that and he is helping he's dropping a smoke to hooksy hooksy smokes the door but then again he drops a flash it has no value whatsoever. He gets dinged and he leaves Hunter all alone. Now this is this is an individual situational, individual mistake, like not recognizing what the hell are you doing. He dropped that smoke. Let's go back. He dropped that smoke. And that was the right play to do. I don't know why Monesi didn't drop that through that smoke, but whatever. It was the right play to do, but he 
toss that flash for absolutely no reason. See this? That flash, no, not, not necessary. And then he gets dinked. And then he escapes and leaves Hunter alone. Now Hunter is just done here. He already got spotted. He is getting surrounded by all sides. He needs help, right? Justin is in a good spot to, to go. Monesi is far away, only a flash. Hooksy bailed him. Actually, Hooksy bailed on him. He just didn't help him and left him to die, kind of get dinked and then threw a nade and that's it. He didn't swing because probably Op is waiting and that's it. Now Justin is getting ready to activate here. Now the only thing that I don't understand is how the fuck Justin has full nades here and has full utility. That is beyond me. It's 35 seconds left, but whatever. That's not the problem right here. Now what happens here, you can see that that Hooksy, first he bailed on on uh, Hunter and he left the site open. Now Hunter died for nothing. He had no support. He could have maybe taken one with him, but it didn't really happen. And uh, now what they need to do is wait for Justin's flank to kill one guy. Now what, what Hooksy does here, I remember this one. He calls for a flash and he goes in before Justin's flank. And that is something that doesn't make sense to me because Justin has a perfect timing. He's probably calling, wait, 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 I'm on the flank. I'm in the hut already. They probably don't know this. And uh, see how that looked like from the perspective of the T, whoever was there. I think it's the Magus who killed him, right? He got spotted here on ladder and then he gets killed here. So Justin is on the flank here, right? I think this smoke doesn't land. But Justin is on the flank here. He's already there. He like nobody's expecting him. Let's see if somebody expects this. Nobody expects him in, in the in the hut so fast. So let's go to Magisk. Flash. And then Justin is like going there. And he gets one, he gets spotted, probably traded after that. So yeah, traded from Magisk instantly and Monacy is forced to save. 15, 13, you tell me what do you think whose mistake was this? But it's pretty obvious if you if you if you deep look at it like deeply. Now this is the icing on the cake of this match. Monacy gets two, Hunter dies. It's a fast push, slow utility. Unless he gets a third one here and it's a 4v2. And this type of rounds is your, you cannot afford to lose, right? Even though the rotations came in, Justin tried to push, which is a normal thing. Hooksy already still alive in the site. Monesi got a triple. Nico trying to help with, uh, with upper. Maybe he'd have been on main, but him being here is not the, the biggest problem. They planned the bomb and now they have all the positional advantage they, they want. Hooks event from secret, nothing wrong with that one. He was waiting for him. And now they have a kit and they have two smokes. Nico drops a smoke to Mones. No, Nico drops it here. And Justin has a smoke. Now you always want to smoke the bomb. You always, no matter the situation, you smoke the bomb always rather than the place because you can always get spammed to the smoke into the position where the bomb is planted. You know how these things work. So Justin has a smoke. Mones he has a kit. They smoke the window. And just instead of smoking the bomb, he smokes the door. The molly comes in, that buys you another six seconds on the bomb. And that is the end of G2 on this map. Now, guys, it's just... This is just one map. And like I told you, like this is not... This is going very deep into the whatever happened, but... Um, you can see a lot of things happening that you couldn't see on the first time when you watch the broadcast, when you watch the, the, the actual live game. And uh, so many mistakes happen for G2 and 2v4, 2v4, 1v4, uh, all this like um, utility, positional trading, all these things, calls, everything like that. The whole structure was completely off and you can see, you can see uh, why and how they lost. Obviously, you don't want to take anything from Vitality because Vitality had a lot of good moves into this map as well. And uh, I think that's it. And uh, you tell me, guys, like what you think. Make sure, like you, if you like this type of content, and uh, you like me doing demo reviews and everything about the. Uh, 
the, the, the tactical side of the game. If you like this type of content, make sure you subscribe on my channel and you, and you like and you post a comment if you agree with me on these things. And if you don't, then I would like to discuss it with you people and see what you how you feel about this thing. Anyway, that should be it for this demo and I'll catch you on the next one. See ya. All right, guys, I just want to remind you that OneXBet is an official partner of this channel. And if you're a betting man and you're over 18, you just go ahead and register on OneXBet and use code 1XCASAD or CASAD 1X. You'll see the link in the description and you get up to 130 euro bonus directly from me. It's a pretty decent platform if you like those type of things. And uh, thank you. See ya.